Do you ever see yourself going back to more blockbuster, big budget type films, or do you prefer this? I don't know. I mean, it's, I, I always kind of fool myself sometimes into thinking that there's some kind of macro plan to like my decision making, but it's not. I mean, it's just sort of you just try and find anything which you hopefully will connect to, and you think you can somehow make it a little bit better, or, or any, or just do anything with it. I don't know. I mean, I, I all like getting into Twilight and everything. Everything felt so accidental. Maybe it's just some kind of self-protection. <laughs> like where I'm just like, oh, it's all just a, like, you know, everything's just kind of happened by accident. Um, but I don't know. I mean, I, I think in the same way that I, when you get incredibly lucky with with having roles which give you, which afford you um, the opportunity to do smaller things. Um, what appealed great. to you about Good Time? Because it's, it's a dark role. Well, there was no role when I first signed up to it. There's no script or anything. I just really liked. Uh, the trailer to <laughs> the director's previous movie. Um, and really, they, it's really just, I, I'm starting to find as well that I'm just basically playing a director. Like every single, t in one way or another, I, I think that's the only way I can really figure it out. And I really liked their energy just as people. And they're very, very kind of, they're like little dynamos. And I'd kind of, I'd played a lot of parts which are quite reactive and quite passive. Mm. And uh, I just wanted to play a part which was, really on the front foot and also didn't have any shame and any fear and uh, and I could just feel it in them and I knew what they were going to write and I knew that they kind of had they liked doing they liked writing audacious things we just have a client that walked in we're good you get another 10 grand your brother will get out where are you how much money can you get right now come on bro oh my gosh are you kidding me what do you think I'm doing this for? I want to get him out tonight. And then talking about doing things that you're afraid of, I mean, in the first draft of the script, there were certain scenes in it where I was reading, going, like, Jesus, I don't even know if this is legal. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, is there a loophole? If you do something in a movie, does that make it legal? Right. Um, um, but, um, but yeah, I kind of... And, and it's exciting. I mean, there's so, there so many other things that get in the way of making a movie, like peop, that whether people who are providing the money say you can't do so. You know, and when you have someone who's really kind of punk and just says, I don't even care. I have this opportunity to make it, and this might be my last opportunity. I'm going to do whatever I want. And, uh, and you so rarely meet those people. When I, when I work with Claire Denis afterwards, and, mm -hmm. uh, and she's like that as well, where it's just kind of, and she's been doing that for movie after movie her whole career. I think it's just like, you know, my own insecurities or whatever. I want to, I want to find someone who doesn't have them and just be like, okay, I'm, if I just hold onto the train, the train will go through the wall and everything will be fine. Is there a role or a, even a, a portion of a role, a line that has particularly stuck with you years later from someone you've played? I think my prostate is asymmetrical. I always really love that. I what is that from? That. From Cosmopolis. Ah. And it always kind of, it's me and, me and Paul Giamatti uh, have this thing where I say, I say it to him when we're crying together. And he's like, mine too. And I'm like, what does it mean? And he's like, it's nothing. It's a harmless variation at your age. Why worry about it? <laughs> it's, it's one of my favorite scenes I've ever done. But there's something, I just, <laughs> there's something really profound for me anyway. Couldn't tell you what it means. Right. But it really meant something. It really, <laughs> means, but it really, really means something to me. Okay. <laughs> Rob, you started as a young actor. Uh, did you have to get up courage to assert yourself on set with people? I can't. I just run away and cry. <laughs> really? Still? Like, still? No, I don't really. Well, I don't know. I do. Um, <laughs> like, uh, no, I mean, it's such a weird thing because you kind of, I think, as soon as you have to be asserting yourself to a director, it kind of breaks the fourth wall. I, I want someone to be seeing, you know, it's not supposed to be you when you walk onto set. Mm -hmm. And so if you're suddenly, uh, the awareness of, of the unreality of everything suddenly becomes too much for me. So I always, 
I just try and avoid it and hopefully they'll just see what they're doing that's wrong. Never, ever, ever works. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it just gets worse and worse. But at the same time, I feel like it completely throws me off if I'm trying to, if I have to say like, hey, this is my process. It's like, I don't know what my process is. There needs to be just some kind of understanding that you're, you're trying to do something good. You're not just like messing around. I don't know. Ready? Okay, quiet on set. And okay. I lock down the lens. Yeah. Let's do it. Hi, I'm Margot Robbie. Brian Cranch. Robert Pattinson. John Boyega. I'm Sam Rockwell. Willem Dafoe. Emma Stone. Alison Janney. Guillermo del Toro. Thank you for watching. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Thanks for watching The Hollywood Reporter. The Hollywood Reporter. The Hollywood Reporter. On YouTube. On YouTube.